Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Mr Craven here from the NET English Director team and I'm here with Mr Kofi and Mrs Garbutt, also from the NET English Director team. And today we're going to be talking about uh, Armitage's poem Remains. And I will say from the outset, that, um, after the English conference last weekend where Simon Armitage was talking about this poem, I don't know what the phrase is, um, fanboying and fangirling on Simon Armitage? Is <laughs> it all, absolutely. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, fanning, certainly. <laughs> um, so, should we start with uh, Mrs. Garbutt? I mean, why is this an interesting, at least a useful poem, do you think? What's your, your um, about it? I think particularly when, after our literature conference as well, um, it was really interesting to the Channel 4 documentaries as well. Yes. Um, and yeah. there, was a, there were a number of um, poems that he, he spoke about and, mm. and, and did his readings through as well. Um, and just the fact that we could understand far more from it, so the understanding of it being... Obviously, we know from the sol uh, from the soldier's perspective, but the fact it made everything far more spoke about the um, the vocabulary that the soldier used. Yeah. So I think also it, it's changed my interpretation because when I was thinking about why he used specific, um, for example, the colloquial language, mm. and you will understand then that actually he was using it from that soldier's perspective, and it made it more natural and made it more um, human to that soldier. So it really interested me. I think it's just give us it give me a sort of more realistic mm. overview um, of yeah. the poem as well. Um, and I know other poems that he mentioned as well, such as Manhunt yeah. um, and linking back to those documentaries. I mean, it's from, from that point of view, it's interesting, isn't it? Because from the anthology as a whole, from the conflict poems we look at, mm. um, the first person aspects are quite limited, aren't they? Proper first person soldier's point of view. So with Remains, although he is writing, you know, Simon Armitage has never been a soldier. <laughs> he's not He's not seen military service. But he's basing it on an account of a real serving soldier. And you're right, kind of word for word in places, actually lifting literally the wording from the soldier. So it is almost like a first -her, first hand account, just sort of ventriloquised. Yes, exactly. with it just being that monologue and just allowing him to, it just sounds so natural. And I think yes. when he'd spoken about it, it seemed even more natural. Um, like I said, once he'd explained why he'd used particular phrases, and then, like I said, just that clear link that he'd yeah, used absolutely. with the um, with the sword. Was it Rob? I think it was. Yeah. Rob Tremans, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Title. So talk us through then uh, this this documentary, Mr. Kofi. So. Um, um, I've got to be honest, I haven't seen it. Have you so, not? No, I haven't. I've seen clips. I'm oh, sorry, I haven't seen the full thing. recording um, as well. Right, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but I do think it does create a sense of realism, though, doesn't it? In yeah. terms of, you could say, the first person, the colloquial language, the real life language. I do know that, and I'm to speak about it, yeah. um, that a lot of the lines are literally lines that Rob said himself. So the blood shadow, which is one of my favourite lines, was an actual phrase that he yes, used. Yes, you mentioned that, haven't you? Yeah, yes. that the, the blood remained there um, literally in the outline of a, of a man which is mm -hmm. obviously a, a the broad daylight on the other side yeah, yeah. sort of this idea which Simon Armitage had said himself that he thinks is physically impossible but yet this man believes he could see daylight through the gun holes yes that's right here's the flesh that yeah. yeah I mean the bloodshed thing I think is interesting isn't it because I mean, it, and <laughs> again we're quoting Simon Armitage from the conference you know yes. um, but he was talking wasn't he about the those of those and somehow you know sometimes in, 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 in it gives rise to these quite poetic sort of ideas. Because the blood shadow, I'd yeah. assumed was completely, I assumed that was an Armitage construction. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the bits of it I thought were kind of being in, not the soldier's voice, I assumed that bit because it's such an evocative image, wasn't yeah. it? Definitely. You know, the lingering bit, you know, the, uh, the, the blocking of the light from it, you know, yes. it's such a, such a, uh, yeah, same yes. kind of idea. Yes. I mean, the, the, the documentary it was based on, wasn't it? It was a 200, two, sorry, 2008 documentary called The Not Dead, Yes. wasn't it? Mm. Um, and Mrs. Garvey, do you remember in terms of what that was about? What were you trying to explore in that? Do you um, from what I can recall, um, and I've, I've ha I have seen part of it only mm. from a different poem actually. Um, Sam Hunt actually from from the documentary. Yes. So I know that he's um, he's allowed to um, interpret the soldiers' perspectives from a different. There's a variety of wars. So I know, yes. for example, I think this is. It doesn't say definitely, but is it implied it's the Gulf War? I yes, think yeah. it's implied from that. I think um, Armitage said it was, uh, it was Iraq, wasn't it? Was um, it Iraq? So okay. Was, yeah, so for example, when I've um, so I've, I've seen the one from the, from the manhunt, mm -hmm. um, and it allows the. It allows the, the soldier and their family to be involved and to explain their perspective of it, not the fact that it remains just from the um, from the war, but also the aspects pr um, prior to that and after, um, mm. and how it impacts one's lives after that, not only family but friends as well. Yeah, definitely. Because it's the linking thread, I think, isn't it, about the whole documentary about the idea of survivors of modern warfare. Yes. And you're right, seeing it from more than one point of view, absolutely. Mm. Which is interesting. Just yeah. to say to students as well that you can watch it on YouTube. Yes. It's available, yes. even though yes. the permissions aren't there, but um, I think Simon Armitage said he keeps putting it back on. Yeah, see it. Yeah, so watch it quickly. Yeah. <laughs> 
So in, in simple terms then, so students often see this poem as a soldier shooting someone and getting PTSD afterwards. What do you think of that as a summary? Is that a reasonable summary? Is that... Now, Mr. Gump's giving you a hard stare here in terms of... <laughs> I think, what well, no, I, I just think it's in some ways as brutal as that. Yes. Because actually I think from the soldier's perspective, it's part of their duty. So not to dwell on actually what they've done because it's mm. part of the way of their training. Um, I don't know if anyone disagrees with that, but that's exactly how I see it. So I know the first four stanzas, I always look at it of, you know, of, of what's been happening yes. and that build up the looter and how they deal with it. And that the, the final four stanzas then actually how they cope with that afterwards. And I do think it is quite, even though we can definitely see that shift to the PTSD, how they, the coping with it, it's almost like they're, they're still trying to, um, when they're talking about like the drink and the drugs, mm. Um, even though it's not being able to get them over that PTSD, um, anything they'll do just to try and cope with everything. But I do think um, it is as simple as that. It's because yeah. it's part of their duty, it's part of their life. Did, did you see that thing was interesting? In terms, it, there's only stanzas, because you're right, there's lots in there about how normal this is. On another occasion, mm. yeah, we got sent out. There's nothing about the same, isn't it? You know? Well, myself and somebody else and somebody else. Just a normal thing, isn't it? Not Absolutely. even specific about who these people are. It's a completely run of the mill situation. And all of the same mind. And that maybe links to the idea, doesn't it, that part of that normality is about the rigour of their training. That they're a unified force at this point. Mm. Yeah. And there is routine, but also it's a group of them. And I think one of the interesting things, I'm going to call him Simon, my <laughs> friends now. Simon. Um, the, yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> but he picked up on about this was the idea of kind of the group when it happened. Yes. But then afterwards, you're right, they started to deal with it as an individual. Yes. Mm. That the one person has to do that. Although interestingly, I think he picked up the idea of the blood shadow. Is that the idea of kind of that's the point which it became individual after it had happened? When, yes. yes. And kind of almost and on the side, that's the point at which both he and the individual he shot became individuals. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So, um, in terms of the PTSD, then, I mean, that's a solid interpretation. We're happy with this. Is I always perceive it in that way. Yeah. Yes, most definitely. I definitely think it's from that PTSD and how, and I also think from it. From it doesn't seem as it, you can just see that he doesn't have any rest from it. So mm. it's almost like whatever's happened at war, it doesn't end at war. It's reminded us that it continues afterwards. And again, I kind of, it kind of links to um, family and friends how they are having to cope with it afterwards. Yes, because I mean you're right. The idea of someone is the person who gets shot who suffers most, and literally, I'm not questioning that is mm. the truth. But also, I mean, yeah, you're right, in terms of Armitage here is unpacking that the soldier himself suffers. It doesn't yes, consequence it happens. Definitely. As do the people around him. Yeah. You know, there's a much, much bigger picture than simply that. Uh, the immediacy of it. And I think it links as well, particularly when, when we're saying about how it's normal normal and it seems like a normal there's things like um and rips through his life. Um and you know, when they're talking about um it's it's like that violent imagery, you know, about how mm. they uh, toss his guts back into the uh, back into his body. It's really violent, but yet it just seems very matter of fact because of how they yes. just cope with it. Um, and again, I do think it links to that PT towards because how can they expect to cope with that yes. even afterwards? I mean, I mean traumatized to that to that extent. I, I suppose also part of the brutality, isn't it? It's, it's almost preemptive brutality. The fact they see this as normal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Until it actually happens, and he sees the aftermath, and that's when he realises how shocking this is. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it seems like a normal thing to be doing, is almost he's been brutalised to that. What is it, do you think, that he's really bothered by with this event, then? What is it that troubles him? Because presumably, as a soldier on active service, you know, I'm question, you see horrific things. And not to um, devalue um, or intensify how awful lots of those things you see are. Um, I know in the documentary, they, they talk about quite a few of these things. But what is it about this experience that, that, that stands out, do you think? It, it's, it's somebody who's not in the kind of oh, someone in war and you mm -hmm. think about I mean there's reference to Macbeth at the end bloody life my bloody hands yes so definitely it's an obvious reference to guilt there but also the idea that I think in Macbeth is that Macbeth is a is a killer but he's a soldier and he's celebrated for that at the mm -hmm. beginning when he's he kills a traitor but then the minute quote unquote innocent I suppose that's when yeah. everything changes and I think the same for the soldier in remains where he's used to killing it's part of his honour code really mm -hmm. you think about the killing that takes place in Charge of the Light Brigade, where we're supposed to glorify that. Whereas the minute it becomes someone who's a looter, um, rather than a soldier, that's, I think, what affects him, I think, to see the, the, the person himself. And whether or not this is... I don't know why it happens here, but he seems to realise that this is a human being afterwards, mm. and that's the thing that seems to, to kind of haunt him. And we get the clarity, don't we, the, the image of the light on the other side. As, as a metaphor, it's beautiful, isn't it? Because the idea of... Um, sorry. 
graphic and gory and disgusting, but as an yeah. idea of actually seeing not just light on the other side, but almost like his life on the other side. And that idea, is, as you were saying with Scarbert, about you know, all the things that go with that. You know, this is a person, but there are family, friends, mothers, children, and, you know, fathers, yeah. all the rest of it. Um, it's also the ambiguity, isn't it, that it isn't clear whether he deserves it or not, in the sense of, is he turning around to shoot at them? Is he not? And yeah. they never tell you. No. no. Probably or possibly not. And it doesn't say that when they get there, he has got a gun, oh, we were right to shoot him, there we go. Mm. It's simply a case of, you know, they go back and they see the reality of what has happened. Yeah. But having to choose at that moment that the, the person's life is in your hands and that moment of choice. Mm. And it's the moment of choice itself which is the, the agonising bit, isn't it? Yeah. Not actually the result of it at the end of it. Yeah, it's interesting. So why, why do you think there is this focus on this graphic description of the body, then, in terms of the hitting of the loser? Yeah, I think it's. I think the the graphic nature of it is to kind of emphasise the fact that um, the way he's been treated as well. You know, it's the mm. fact that he's he's carted off in the back of a lorry, mm. which sounds very similar to kind of Wilfred Owen. Kind of like, yeah, it kind of, does yes. absolutely yes. Yeah, so that sense of dehumanisation, I suppose, in terms yeah. of he's been uh, kind of tossed away and, and treated like he, he's he doesn't even exist. You know, I think that's quite. Um, I think the reason that he goes into the graphic nature of it is, is that to mm. show the kind of, again, the realism, the fact that this has actually happened, but all aren't treated like people, they're treated like just objects, you know, objects yeah. of life, I suppose. Um, the, yeah. the fact that he can't get, but then again, it's that fact that he can't get it out of his head, you know, then I'm a home on leave, and you get that scissora there, almost like he's trying to end it, but it doesn't, but I blink and he bursts again, and it's that image, it's just so graphic, that's kind of stained, that's still, I suppose like Wordsworth with the, with the, the mountain, you know, it's that he's haunted. It's a huge and mighty mm. form that he yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because you're right; we do get continuity throughout the first part of it, don't we? And then we get end of story, except not really. That's mm. when we get the cesura, we get the end yeah. stop, and it's much more abrupt, yes, isn't it? It is not as neat. It's also interesting that the lines get almost quite long ones as well. Um, yeah. Whereas there's a degree of continuity to the first ones, even though it's not as simple as being I'm um, Fantasma, you know. Yeah. And I think that's meant to emulate the kind of well something that Simon Armitage mentioned himself you've got the four lines in each stanza mm. representing the kind of regimented style of, of army life yes, yes. but then it, it loses like you say it loses it by its begins and he loses his sense of discipline and his sense of purpose almost yes. and yeah. you end with the two lines you know and, and, and it's almost like he's lost his, mm. his, his purpose he's lost his Absolutely. his kind of regimented life because it's about the art of it again isn't it the idea of kind of who copes with it how do you cope with it yeah. Yeah. what is around you to, what also, is your support network yeah. Yeah. I also think in those last two lines as well it's whether or not you think about it as as you said as well with uh, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth also is it an expletive that it's, it's his anger that you can't cope yeah. with this as well Absolutely. Um, yes. and it yeah, makes us yeah. quite curious about that I also think as well um, when we think about in stanza six when he says about sleep I always link that to um, as well, no more. and because yes, you know it no shows that that's really when you should be at peace yeah. um, mm. and, and that vulnerability. Yet it shows that he's um, he's struggling yeah. at this point in time. And, and what's nice is you can track that back, can't you, to kind of the moment when it actually happens. So in the, in the third stanza, this idea of he becomes um, uh, sorry, in the fourth stanza, it paints off the image of agony mm. and being being this literal physical thing, so yeah. almost being a metaphor, there's a symbol yeah. in his brain, yeah. and that's the thing you can never escape because that's not him being a living thing. Suddenly, it's something that's consciously in your consciousness, isn't it? You can't Absolutely. escape that trouble yeah. like that. Yeah, it's interesting about the expletives as well with the bloody life, bloody hands, because the original yes. has has swears, 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 isn't it? Are you yeah. gonna say it, sir? Go on. Uh, I don't know if I dare say it, <laughs> thing, but yeah, the the, yeah. The, the kind of the language used is. I mean, Simon Amitage mentioned it, didn't he? Was yeah. Ron's uh, son stunned, isn't it? In the version we got, yeah. son stunned. In the original, it's son fucked, isn't it? Yeah. I shall, there we go. Oh, I, shall, I shall say it. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, and then yes. he he debated whether or not does that detract from the yeah. the original message, the Mickey Way. Mm. And I think his argument was um, he was he would compromise and say you can take the language out because I want this message. It's important this, enough to be shared. Exactly. Yes, yes. Even though it does probably detract, doesn't it? Because it's the, again, so. realism, it's the kind of mm. the feeling. The brutality of, of the language reflecting the brutality of the event. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. And also I suppose that the other bit is, um, <laughs> it does think back to the, uh, the light as well, seeing for day on the other side. Yeah. Light itself, they represent kind of, you know, seeing life and life being destroyed as well, doesn't it? And this yeah. is a countryside, there's a landscape that has been destroyed by yes. violence yes. and so on. Yep. Then the violence becomes you know, um, internalised, doesn't it, on the part of the soldier. Yeah. So, we, so we go back to when he's back, you know, yes, we get the blood shadow when he's there, and even then it's individualised, going beyond that kind of group experience. Mm. But then the blinking, he bursts against through the doors of the bank and reliving those moments. Yes. And the says, you're absolutely right, kind of ticking these things off, this rapidity of this repetition. 
And he is deliberately repeating elements from earlier, isn't he? Yes. To show that kind of being troubled yes. by that. Yeah. Let's see about the drink and drive. Any thoughts about that and the dreams? Uh, and I've just interpreted it always just about in, uh, desperation, just to yeah. show his desperation and that um, that he will is possibly looking for any sort of um, anything to alleviate that pain. Yeah. And that's um, the, the only way that he can think he can. It's strange that he doesn't talk about the, how he links it to um, a family member or a, or a friend. Um, mm. It's just how he's trying to cope with it individually rather that's than sharing. Yeah. Because I, mean, I suppose, again, having gone from a group experience to an individual, yes. showing it at the end might give him a way of actually kind of working through those problems. Yeah. And so it's also with the, the drink and the drugs thing. The drugs, I mean, obviously, we assume drugs to mean, presumably, possibly therapeutic drugs. Mm -hmm. um, but it does also have that idea of almost medical things. If you're in the army and you're physically injured, yes. you are treated and you recover from that injury, or at least mm -hmm. are helped to as much as they can. Mm -hmm. Whereas how you help someone to recover from this, you know, there isn't something you can take that just gets rid of a guy you've killed. Yes. Yeah. And the guts in it. You, there's, yes. there's not a specific to it as well. It's the flushing him out as well in terms yeah. of almost vomiting out, yeah, wanting, purging the cell. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's in the same yeah. way as you've got metaphorically perhaps Eva Smith, you know, with the bleach, almost yes. wanting to like yeah. bleach herself oh, of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the the influence of the upper class. You've got this man wanting to kind of vomit out the the influence of the cleanse, cleanse yes. 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 again yeah. the water and the blood of Macbeth. And I suppose then you've got that image, haven't you, of the blood shadow, but also the blood in his hand. Yes. yes. You can never get rid of those. Yes. Yeah. They can't be flushed out. Yeah. Yeah. And this idea then, he's here in my head when I close my eyes, that like this trouble, this mental image, dug in behind enemy lines. And I think that image there is so evocative. Mm. How does that image work? This kind of being dug in behind enemy lines. Um, I think it just, it's a clear reference again back to his, um, to his army life, the way that he's yes. able to, he follows those instructions constantly. Um, and again, the fact that it's dug in, it's almost like he's, it's carved into him and he can't, he can't remove that at all. Mm. And the very short line thing, almost like, a, like, like being buried. Yeah. yeah. The link, isn't it? That if you're dug in, I mean, dug in can be metaphorical to mean you're secure. Mm. You've got a secure position. Yeah, embedded into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you can't kind of get the guy out, can't flush him out. Mm. Um, which again could be the military meaning, kind of trying to get someone exposed from their secure yeah. position. But also dug in, kind of burying someone, you bury a dead body, you dig it into the ground, don't you? And yet, because of him, because he said it's a fixed point. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always thought it's, it's almost like that military language that's just coming out of him. Yeah. So the yeah. metaphors he's using are all military metaphors because that's his way of life. And he sort of uses dug in behind enemy lines because that's his context, isn't it? And, and mm. that's how he sees the world. And yeah. the drink and drug won't flush that out either, his kind of experience in him, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's like his so, orders. He follows those orders because yeah. it's part of his duty, isn't it? Yes. And then you're right, this, 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 this vernacular which shifts between the military and the personal, and he's yeah. almost looking to distinguish between those two things. Mm. Yeah. I mean, then the idea of the, the sun stunned and sand smothered land. Why specify that? Why distant? Why sun stunned? Why sand smothered? What's, why is that just giving us a quiz now, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes me think of um, war photography, you know, the foreign dust. Oh, yes. yes. It's almost that sense of. The bloodshed of enemies. Of, the, yeah. yeah, it's like that other, other place. It's otherworldly to me when I read that. Mm. Some distant sun stunned, sun smothered. Sun smothered. Um, for me, it's like the. I mean, I know it's always different from the original language, but... But also, I mean, Armitage has chosen this word yes. instead, hasn't he? Yeah, that's it's still a conscious choice he's made, you're right. Yeah. Sorry, yes, yeah. No, I just think there's two ways of looking at it. I think the way sun stunned and smothered can be positive in one sense, and maybe it's the sense of when they go off to war, there's that sense of promise, you know, mm. stunned mm. and smothered. But then when you look at it backwards and you look at it after the event, suddenly stun suffocating and, yeah. and, yes. and shock. Yeah. So I think for me, it's that sense of the sun, the light, being stunned and amazed, being smothered and wrapped nice and warm, which is the image he had before he went to war, yeah. and now he looks at it in a very different way, and so those words have different meanings to him. Yeah. I think, also, I think in terms of the, um, the distance, I mean, the idea is it's all to be far away, you don't have your what you know, perhaps on tour stays on tour, yeah. and you come back and it's a separation between those two things, yeah. whereas it all to be distant and it isn't. I mean, sun's stunned as well, but you can't escape the heat of it. And the sand as well, I think, I, I think Ozymandias, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The sounds of time, yes. this idea of, yeah. you know, it ought to be distanced by time and geography and clarity and exposure to reality as well. And the enormity of that expressing that, that significantly longer line visually on the page, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Mm. And, and like Ozymandias, you've got that sibilance as well, haven't you? That's yeah, very much that sense of the, the wind in the sound. desert. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Or six feet under in desert sand. I mean, it's got the idea of, again, six feet under the burial. Yes, yes. the burial. Yeah. Through, yeah. Hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then the fact that it brings it near to the knuckle. Visual, it's visceral, it's right there. Yeah. You know, it's not a distance thing at all. Yeah, yeah. here and now. So, in terms of um, tricky things or things that students stumble over, is there anything you come across with this poem 
but they do stumble over it. And sometimes the form and the stanza is decided with this free flowing, free verse. Mm. But are there any kind of misinterpretations you come across? Or? It's not so much, I suppose, an odd interpretation, but I think there can be a tendency to go with overemphasis on the context because it's so well known. Mm. So a lot of students, because they feel they know about the PTSD, or perhaps as a double-edged sword, because they know so much about the context and they have um, researched it, that they yeah. go with that rather than actually an analysing the book. I can see that. Because there's a danger, isn't it, with the PTSD thing, assuming that it's one thing. Yes. It's yes. a label for, you know, thousands of different Absolutely. millions yes. of combinations of symptoms and so on. Yeah. So really got to, you've got to unpack what is his issue, what is he troubled by in here. Yeah. And it's the idea of bringing it back to the remains, isn't it? That it's both the physical remains of the, the yes. looter, yeah. and also the remains in terms of it, it stays with him, those things. Yes. You're right, so PTSD, yes, that's a label for it, but you've got, you can't just leave it at that. You've got to unpack the specifics of that behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had a student kind of wildly misinterpreting it? I'm not sure I ever have, really. No, no I was going to say, I it's think quite it's... quite literal, isn't it? It, it is. is. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I think people just have to get this point, don't they? Yes. But again, I think that's a, this poem could be their go-to poem because it's so literal and so kind of obvious as well as the interpretation, I've noticed students will want to compare this poem even when it's not quite appropriate. Yes. So I think, again, it can be one that it's a great poem to analyse so long yeah. as it fits the question. And Wait, the it, I, mean, I came across it, uh, for example, there was one about um, war as a question, and they compared. And yes. it's a difficult one. I guess it, it sounds at yeah. times the enormity of it in yeah. the individual, but they're little points, aren't they? It's hard to build a bigger argument. Yes, I guess, absolutely. In building from that, sorry, I mean, what, so where would you compare it to? Where do you think it fits with? I mean, I, I know I've got one in my head, which I'm assuming someone's going to say almost immediately. I think it's a very, very natural fit with one of the poems. Are you going to say it? Do you want to explain why? Because I. Um, yeah, I just think because of the aspects of war and just seeing that different view of war, but again through those um, through those monologues as well, yes. and thinking about how because we've got the aspect of um, the soldier and their view of war, yeah. um, but also you, you've got the war photographer who goes from a completely different perspective. Yeah. So you've got a clear contrast, and that would be my go-to. Yeah, definitely. And, you, and you've got even just the same images, the buzzing yeah. in the foreign yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, so yeah. yes, and that goes in as well, doesn't it? You know, and the idea of um, the, the foreignness of the actual war and returning home again, yes. yeah. and yeah. deal with it afterwards, absolutely. caring, struggling, not caring. Yeah. yeah, there's loads that go through that. And the idea of the um, of him still being, and you know, when he's still having those images of the nightmare heat in war yes. photographer and the running feet and can't escape those. Yeah, yeah, it's a neat one, isn't it? Yeah. It's is good. Yeah, uh, Mr. Kofi, any you would go for apart from war photographer? I, I mean, I'd go for the emigre myself. Okay, um, I think I'd go in terms of the idea of memory. Yeah, uh, so looking back, but also I, sp I suppose because they're both about memories of war, being war torn, but also yeah. the the positive and the negative. So obviously the trauma here, but then. In the emigre, she seems to, well, in my interpretation, she's almost misremembering the past and seeing how mm. nostalgic she is. But the time. memory itself becomes almost like a protective thing, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, the hollow doll. Yes, yeah, so and she's aware, I think, she, in the emigre that it is flawed, but it's there's an innocence. And you've yeah. got the light imagery in this, and you've obviously got the light imagery mm. there as well. So, yeah. but, At a push, I suppose you could do something like bayonet charge or exposure. They're not the best fit, but they are war poems. You get the, yeah. again, yeah. the visceral language, you get the reflection of the, the basic reality of the physicality, and yes. you get the theme as well, don't yeah. you? But yeah. Even poppies with, yeah. with the kind of domestic uh, kind of life mixing with the military, yeah. Yeah. perhaps. Yes, yeah. Being yeah. Yeah. yes. there's always that. <laughs> this is a very good neat side of the I mean, sort of penultimate question, I suppose. I mean, People do argue that this is an anti-war poem. Do you think it is? Do you agree with that? Lots of, lots oh. of war, war, yeah, half making expressions on the table. I, I, war. So I don't think it is either. But no. on, yeah. um, I don't think anything about this is negative about war itself or the military. Um, I think it's, a, I, I, in its core, I think it's a poem about humanity and about mm. um, how we experience situations, whether it's this or a car crash or any other kind of trauma, I think it's about the human experience and the human condition and about with that. Maybe it's a criticism of the coping mechanisms after war. How we care for ourselves as well. Yes. And, so, yes. Uh, and yeah. mental health and, and maybe it's a criticism of the way we treat that, but I don't think it's a criticism of war itself. Mm. It's I agree. Of, yeah. yeah, I agree. I think um, only because thinking about war, I think because it sticks with this house constantly after mm. when he's returned from war, um, and it's not actually against another soldier, it's against a looter. And that's really the significance of it, that it's, uh, he's going against somebody who was 
stealing from something that was happening yes. at war rather than somebody he was in combat with. Um, you can't depersonalise it then, see them as just a, a uniform a person, I think that's person why, in the context, aren't yeah, they? Yes. Absolutely, the fact that he, you know, when he realises the guilt um, about when he says about probably armed and probably not, he's not quite sure if it was the right thing to do at the yes. time, but again, being under instruction, doing his duty, what's expected yes. of him for his um, country, and I think that's that's why I'm a bit kind of hesitant um, if you're thinking about I, 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 I would agree entirely, yes, absolutely. I think it kind of, in, in some ways actually, it's doing a disservice to the individual soldier, isn't it? Because yes. as a pro or anti war point, it's irrelevant here. Yes. Okay. It's a context of the individual, it's looking at the impact on them. Yes. And you're right, that troubling moment of choice, which is a thing that stays with you. Because you can never stop having had that choice. Mm. And that choice, even though in the moment it's not it. Yes. And that's what stays with him. I mean, that's what, what, what remains, I suppose. Yeah, isn't absolutely. It? Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Right, um, that's it for this podcast. Huge thanks to both uh, Mr Kofi and Mrs Garber for taking the time to discuss this with us. And as ever, do talk to your teachers and members of the English Director team if you have any queries, questions, comments or concerns. And thank you very much for listening.